Yes, Mr. Denelli. Thank you, Commissioner. I now call uh, Stephen Weller. Mr. Weller, do you go into the witness box? Mr. Weller, can I ask whether you'd prefer to be sworn or make an affirmation? I can be sworn, yep. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Weller. You. Do sit down. Yes, Mr. Donnelly. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Weller, can you please state your full name? Stephen Francis Weller. And you, you've given your address to the Royal Commission. Yes. Have you received a summons to attend today to give evidence? Yes, I have. And do you have that summons? I do have that it? here. You're going to take it from me? Yeah. I tender that summons, Commissioner. 3.96 will be the summons to Mr. Weller. Uh, Mr. Weller, have you prepared a statement uh, together with uh, together with 29 exhibits of your um, of the evidence uh, that you've given to that you wish to give to the commission? Yes, I have. Uh, and is that statement dated the 21st of May 2018? Correct. Yep. Uh, and is it true and correct? I believe so. Uh, yeah, Commissioner, if I could tender Mr Weller's statement, please. The statement of Mr Weller and its exhibits. Uh, the statement dated 21st May 18 is exhibit 3.97. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr Weller, can you assist um, the Commission today by briefly exp explaining your employment background? Uh, oh, um, how long have we got? Um, <laughs> Well, perhaps you can perhaps you can start uh, perhaps you can start by by telling us what um, what you did after you received your Bachelor of Commerce from Newcastle University. Okay, I went into uh, professional accountants' office uh, during the course of that uh, degree, and then uh, went out into uh, commerce. Worked for Lang Hancock um, for a period of time, and probably about thirty five years of um, working in commerce up until <clears throat> the time that I uh, bought the hotel. And um, had, had you worked in the hospitality industry before you um, bought the Nambucca Hotel, which we'll come to in a moment? I had spent some years uh, in what I'd call family-owned hotels as a younger person. Mm. And, um, and are you also, um, or were you a certified practicing accountant? Yes, I was. Uh, and you mentioned that um, you purchased the Nambucca Hotel. When did, when did you do that? Uh, October 2005. And am I right to say that it was at that time that you um, resigned from your commercial uh, position and took up uh, running the, the pub with a business partner? Uh, yes, you could say that, yep. Uh, and can you tell the Commission uh, how you um, came to fund the purchase of the Nambucca Hotel back in 2005? Uh, well, uh, as I understood it at the time, uh, there had been an auction program and a loan had been established um, for <coughs> a possible purchase. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so that, uh, that was uh, Bank West and that loan was still available and uh, I was able to... Um, Avail that loan at the time from Bank West, uh, and you you purchased uh, the you purchased the whole hotel through uh, Bainbridge Enterprises Number One Proprietary Limited. Is Correct. that right? Correct. Yes. Uh, and uh, and it was that entity that was uh, the borrower for the uh, for the facility at that time. Correct. Um, now, when you and we'll. We'll come to the facility, the subject of, or uh, the major subject of evidence in a moment. But uh, can you tell the Commission, please, a little bit about how you managed the hotel in that early period, that is between 2005 and about 2008? Can you just ask that question again, please? Can you tell the Commission how you managed the hotel, um, how it, it operated during the period from 2005 to 2008? 
Uh, well, I would visit the hotel uh, from Sydney, um, probably on a, on a basis which I think I've said in here, about five days a fortnight, travel up, um, spend time there, um, and basically perform the, the role of a proprietor. Um, and uh, that, that continued until approximately 2008. Um, that was all aspects of the hotel came under that management. And in 2008, uh, you, you bought out your partner, is that right? Yes, that's correct. Uh, and it was at that time uh, that you say uh, in your statement that Bainbridge, the company, um, um, took out um, a, a facility or a, a different facility for the purchase of, for the purposes of buying out your partner uh, and you entered into a facility in about June 2008, is that right? That would be right um, and yes to, to your question. Uh, and, and you set it out in your, state, your, your statement and I'll just go through some of the terms of that but as I understand it the facilities obtained totaled about $3.725 million, is that right? Yes, that would be about right. And there was an interest rate for a fixed portion um, which had a fixed rate plus a margin of 2.24%? Yes, on one half of it, yes. And there was an interest rate for the variable portion, um, portion which was the bank bill swap rate plus 2.74%? Correct. Yep. And... There was a mortgage over uh, the the hotel itself. Is that right? Yes. And and you and your wife also offered guarantees. Is that right? Correct. And what was the length of the facility that you entered into um, at that time? Uh, Fifteen years. And is it the case that there were um, also some non-monetary covenants on the? The facility? Yes, that's true. And, and what were they? Uh, oh, I think they refer to them as uh, uh, well, a DSR and uh, the ICR, which was interest cover ratio and a debt service ratio. Yeah. I see. Was there, a, was there an LVR or a loan valuation ratio um, at that time? Not at that time. I think they it might have been referred to differently uh, or in a different way, particularly in the 2005 documents, but they're not. Here. Um, so there was nothing mentioned in that 2008. I see. And you were also aware that your, um, your, the facilities, I might call it the 2008 facilities, were also governed by um, Bank West general terms for business lending? Yes. And you refer in your statement to, um, uh, to, those, um, to those terms. Um, perhaps I can take you to... Um, CBA.0517.0094.0080, right. are these the terms to which you refer? They look familiar. And I think if you go to 0.0083, Um, and we'll just blow up 1.2a. Uh, and it, that refers to a facility review. Is that the provision that you refer, referred to in your statement? Oh, yes, I, I, yes. Um, and perhaps I can skip ahead and that, that can come down. Uh, in, um, in your evidence, you say that uh, after you entered into the facility, uh, the 2008 facilities, then uh, you were informed by Mr Goldsmith in about 2000 and mid-2009 um, about a valuer being engaged. Who was Mr Goldsmith? Um, he was the relationship manager for the bank. I see. And, and what was it um, that, you, that he discussed with you in the middle of 2009? Uh, well, the, um, the fact that there was a need for evaluation at that time. 
when had there last been a valuation of the Nambucca Hotel? I, I think it was in 2006. I see. And uh, did you, uh, or can you explain what involvement you had in the engagement of, um, of Mr Quinlan, who was the person who did the, the valuation? Well, as is the case with these things, uh, the borrower pays for the valuer. So I um, selected Mr Quinlan from the uh, panel of valuers. I see. And he, he, he produced a valuation of the Nambucca Hotel? Yes, he did. Um, and that's uh, in your evidence. Um, if I can take you to SWF 04, which is CBA.4000.0059. Dot eight one four six, and that's a, a picture of the Nambucca Hotel on, on the front of the valuation I see there. Correct. Uh, and were you given a copy of this um, valuation? Yes, I was. Yeah. And and in fact, if you go to, if I can ask the operator kindly to go to point eight one nine, eight one four nine. I'm sorry, page four of that document. Uh, and the the hotel was valued at that point by Mr Quinlan at $4.53 million? Yes, correct. Now, returning to around uh, to that time, uh, or perhaps you can explain for the Commission the nature of the business in the period during 2010 and how the the, um, the hotel was uh, was travelling at that time? Uh, oh, 2010, after the GFC, um, well, things changed a little bit. People, you know, uh, the effect on the economy was such that discretionary spending was uh, impaired by people. So we had a little bit of a downturn in revenue. Um, and uh, this, is, this is something that I would communicate to the bank in my uh, regular reporting to them. Um, I um, uh, started to spend more time at the hotel in, in an attempt to, uh, well, keep the profitability up, decrease costs, you know, manage the employment, manage the stock, all those sorts of things uh, that you would try and do to assist in maintaining um, stability of the hotel and uh, obviously uh, the loan arrangements, yeah. And in 2000, how often or what hours were you spending working at the pub around this, at, around this time, Mr Weller? Um, start at 3.30am in the morning and finish about 9.30 at night. And now uh, Maxville, which is where the Nambucca yep. um, Hotel um, was and is, is some way out of Sydney, is that right? Yes. Um, how far is it from Sydney? Oh, well, five to six hour drive. And so would you, how many days a week would you spend at the, the hotel? Uh, at that time, I'd be spending four days a week, yeah. Uh, and you've given evidence that around this time you received some notices from, um, of non-monetary breaches um, from Bankwest, is that right? Correct, yeah. Um, what, 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 was a, what, did, what was a non-monetary breach? or what was identified in those notices? You, um, well, when they examined uh, your reports and your financial statements and compared them to their requirements under the um, interest cover ratio and the debt servicing ratio, if you weren't hitting the limits that they had imposed, you, you were issued with a breach notice. <clears throat> were, you, um, were you up to date with any um, Payments, interest payments that had to be made on the loan at that time? We were always up to date with our payments. Now, in, in that year, in June 2010, the interest only period and the fixed rate period expired uh, and you had a discussion about that with, um, with a representative, Mr Goldsmith. Uh, and what did he say in relation to the ongoing payment from around 2010 onwards? Oh, 2010. Um, basically, they uh, were coming back and saying, um, well, they issued some, no, they issued a variation, right, which is the normal thing. They called it a variation, but it was a, you know, just a review of the facility. And um, 
they had, I think, in the first uh, set of documents that they presented, they'd uh, put the term at 24 months. You, you may be referring, it may assist, I think this is SWF 05, um, which is CBA.4000.0074.8001. Is that the document to which you're referring? Yeah, that's the one, yep. And perhaps we can go to the next page. Uh, you referred to 24 months, where it says the facility expiry date, it says 24 months from initial drawdown date. Yes. What did you understand that to mean? Um, well, I'll just take it in two parts. The initial drawdown date to me always uh, meant when the, the loan was rolled over, right? Yes. Not going back to the initial loan uh, in past years. So 24 months from the initial drawdown date indicated to me that it, that it was another two years from uh, whenever this uh, variation took place and the loan was rolled over. I see, and you gave evidence previously uh, that the from 2008 had a 15 year limit, is that right? Yes. And what was, when you received this uh, letter from the bank, um, had had you discussed it with Mr Goldsmith before you received this letter? No. Um, and what, what was your reaction when you, uh, when you received this letter? Um, well, I, I sent him a, a memorandum um, saying that, you know, the, uh, the expiry date in particular was um, not what I would expect because the original documents were all uh, out to 2023. Uh, that was probably the, the main uh, point that I was making. Uh, it was I had some discussion in that memorandum about the interest rate um, and then uh, the principal repayments that they were proposing um, were higher than I thought we could manage given the circumstances at the time. Uh, and then I, uh, you know, the, the other things were um, the payment of the facility where in the past we'd had a gap between uh, the, the, the two, for, the two uh, parts of the loan so that the cash flow could handle within the month the payment on time. Are you referring, as you give your evidence, to your memo itself that's <coughs> there? Yes. Which, I mean, yes, if it would I assist am. with yes. that, I'll call that up, it's SWF. Um, 06 CBA.0001.0318.1880. Uh, and if I could just go to where it says term of facility, is that, uh, there's a paragraph there, the original documents all noted the expiry date of 8 June 2023. The current documents note only the term of two years from drawdown. In discussion, we have talked about the remaining 11 years after the two years contained in the documentation. I would presume then that there would be no objection to showing the date of 8 June 2023 in the current documentation. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Uh, and, and then you referred to the margin. I won't go to that, but also the other issues that you've mentioned are, are in this memo. So is this how you responded to Mr Goldsmith yes. in response to that? And... You, uh, you, then in, you then had some further email correspondence uh, with um, Mr Goldsmith. Perhaps I can take you to SWF 07 CBA.4000.0075.1182. Perhaps we can go to the bottom of that. Uh, oh, to the th dot what, double one eight four. It's possible to put them both up one one eight three and one one eight four. Mr. Goldsmith wrote back to you. He apologised for not coming back to you sooner. You see there, his email on the tenth of September. Yes, I do. And. 
in relation to the term of the facility, he said, as discussed, the loan would be amortised over the remaining 13-year loan term, however, with a term of four years. This reduced term assist with pricing so as to alleviate issues with long-term funding premiums. That said, in my response to BC, I, I will seek that a fresh letter of variation be prepared with the remaining term based on the original funding date be used. So what did you understand that? What did you understand Mr Goldsmith was telling you at that time? Um, well, I think he was uh, saying that they were going to go back and, um, and uh, reinstate the original date that I considered to be in effect and uh, they would look at the 13-year uh, term remaining um, and look at pricing based on how they would um, set that up. But there was, there was going to be a... The, 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 what, what does he talk about? He, a fresh letter of variation be prepared with a remaining term based on the original funding date. And that, yes, and that, and that letter will come to in a moment. Yes. Um, why, why, was that in, why was that issue important to you? Mr. Weller? Well, in a business sense, you, um, you uh, want to know that you've got a, you know, a reasonable term in front of you for the loans because uh, it's just the way you would think in business, you know, and, and that's the way it was uh, set up initially and there was no reason for it to be changed, in my view. And he responds to the other issues. I just draw your attention to the margin. He says the margin of 3.19 per cent will remain as it should look. We look to maintain this loan as a commercial bill. However, we'd be prepared to review the margin upon production of financial statements. So you were ha having a discussion about the length of the, making sure the length was what you um, understood it to be, but there was also a discussion about the interest rate that you were negotiating, is that right? Yes, correct. Yeah. Um, and then you responded there, perhaps we can go to the... Um, ..to 1182. And under term... A facility you say the original date of 8 June 2023 is a term I've always related to in my own thinking. Yes. That's consistent with the evidence you've just given. Yep. Now, now following, uh, then there's again, and I won't take you to all of it, but then there's a further discussion about the margin you've suggested, 3%, and then a discussion as to um, the principal repayments. So that then did result in another letter being um, sent, which is then, in fact, the next exhibit, SWF. 08, and this is CBA 4000-0074.8041. And if you go to the second page, that does have a facility expiry date of 8 June 2023. Yeah, it does. Uh, was that not what you, you had sought in those discussions with Mr Goldsmith? Exactly what I... Yeah. Yes. And, di and what was your reaction when you received then this, this letter of variation? Um, I was very happy. And in relation, um, in relation to um, the margin, um, it provided a margin of 3.95%. Did you have some further discussions about about that particular issue with Mr Goldsmith? Uh, yes, I did, yep. And, uh, and as a result of those um, discussions, uh, or perhaps I should put it this way, what, did, what, did you, what were your discussions with Mr Goldsmith about that in that intervening period? Uh, well, I was comparing that rate to what had been in place previously uh, and there, there were two margins um, applied for the interest only and the, uh, and the other one, the fixed rate, um, or the variable and the fixed rate one, I should say, and they were respectively um, 2.24 and 2.74, so 3.95 was quite a large uh, jump up from those. And, and uh, as a result of that, um, what then, what further, further discussions did you have with Mr... Goldsmith? Um, well, I think that, um, uh, if I can say, that the, uh, 
the principal repayments were another point that I was trying to put across whereby they were looking for a certain amount and I was trying to negotiate a, a smaller amount because of the cash flow that I knew and um, and also the, um, the non-monetary uh, covenants which I wanted to have a range rather than a fixed I see, and, and another offer was made then or another letter was received, very, another variation letter was received on the 12th of November 2010, which is CBA.4000.0074.8062. And if, if you go to the second page of that, I think this is the ultimately the variation that was signed by you and, uh, and your wife, is that right? Yes. Um, and ultimately it was for 12 months from the initial drawdown date, yep. which is obviously um, less <laughs> than what was in the previous document and what you discussed. Why was it that length of time? I've no idea. Well, did you feel able to, um, in your discussions with the bank, were you able to um, were you able to maintain the longer expiry date that you, you sought? No, I wasn't. Uh, I think that that uh, information came to me by way of a telephone conversation that uh, Gary Goldsmith and I had, and he was telling me um, what was going to happen. Um, and that was the expiry date was uh, on, that was on the October variation letter, was not going to remain. Um, that, that the other matters that we've uh, now got in this document were going to be put in place, and that is the 12 months, a principal repayment of 8,000, which was what I had negotiated, um, and the non-monetary co covenants uh, were altered also. Uh, one, I think, was reduced, and the other one stayed the same. Um, yes, so that revelation came by way of a telephone conversation and then I received this further letter of variation. And, and ultimately this was the variation that you, you signed? Correct. And noting the matters that, or perhaps summarising the matters you've identified, um, the expiry date was now uh, 12 months? Yes. And the interest rate had gone up, I think, from the previous um, amount, or the previous margin had been 2.24%, it was now 2.81%. Yes. Yet it was not 3.95%, which I think was one of the... That's right, yes. And, and you also agreed in relation to uh, payments towards the principal at $8,000 per month, is that right? Correct, yep. Then through, well that, no doubt the business goes on whilst you're having this, this negotiation, but um, then during 2011, um, can you explain um, how the business was going during the course of the length of this facility? Um, well, it... It was uh, in that same period where uh, trading had turned down um, and, and uh, as I've said before, um, I attended the hotel on a more frequent basis so that I could try to not only work at the business but um, manage you know, the uh, aspects of employment and stock and whatever I could do to help maintain the business and obviously all the... Uh, relationships with the bank and uh, whatever. And did you make the relevant principal and interest repayments that were required of you at that time? Yes, we did, yep. And it is the case, is it not, that then at the end of 2011, um, the facility was 
uh, extended for a further 12 months, is that right? Yes. Um, and again, during 2012, uh, you continued to make the payments that were due? Yes. Um, did you receive any notices from the bank during that period? Oh, I think, uh, as stated in here, we've uh, we received some breach notices of the non-monetary covenants, right? and they were uh, they incurred a fee of two hundred and fifty dollars, which, in I think, in all instances, the bank waived, probably because I was such a good customer. Well, can you explain? Or that, that occurred, I think, on in, in your evidence, you refer to two occasions where that happened in two thousand and twelve. Um, you had a meeting in September 2012 with the bank. Can you yes. explain to the Commission what happened at that meeting? Uh, we had a meeting with uh, Tim Dellett um, and Gary Goldsmith. Who was Mr Dellett? Uh, a gentleman in credit. I see. Mm. Uh, and, and how did this, this meeting come, um, come to occur? Um, well, I think we received a phone call from Gary Goldsmith to say, yes, we uh, were, they want to have a meeting with us in Sydney um, on a certain date. And uh, do you want me to go on about the meeting? Yes, please. Yep, OK. Well, at the meeting, um, Tim Dellett expressed the view that he thought that the, uh, that the uh, value of the business and uh, the property had uh, deteriorated. Um, he didn't offer any reason why he was saying that, but uh, anyway, you take that as given. Um, we discussed um, the purpose of the meeting was to explore how we would go about things so that we could head towards a renewal of the loans in uh, January 2013. Um, there was... Uh, in his view, um, probably a need to have a, well, certainly a need to have a valuation. And secondly, um, he expressed the view that we would probably need to inject some funds to reduce the loan balance because of the uh, LVR. Um, and he then, um, we then discussed uh, what other assets we may be able to uh, we may be able to introduce to sell. One of them was um, a set of the uh, poker machine entitlements, which I offered as a, a means of reducing the loan to sell a block of poker machine entitlements. Um, we then uh, explored the possibility of selling our house, which came up in conversation. Um, and I think that was, they were the main points of the discussion at I that see. time. Um, the house wasn't security. It was for, not security as part of these loans, no. Uh, and when you when you left that meeting, what uh, what what steps did you put in place in relation to these these matters after that meeting? Well, firstly, I um, engaged a an agent to. Um, get a sale going for the block of poker machines because that was you know pretty straightforward. Uh, my wife and I uh, talked about the house and thought that we would uh, need to or perhaps we should pursue a sale of the house and I guess that's that's about all. You, you mentioned one of the other issues that was raised by Mr Dallard at that meeting was uh, a valuation of the hotel. Yep. What happened in relation to that? Well, the, the valuation was to be um, uh, initiated by the bank um, on an expeditious basis because of the, uh, of the, you know, the time, uh, and basically I was saying time is of the essence because of the facilities becoming due in January 2013. Yep. And was that valuation obtained by the bank? Uh, eventually, yes. Um, and did, um, did you receive a copy of that valuation? No, I did not. Um, you had another meeting 
with Mr Dallet in December. Um, do you know if he? Um, do you know if he had received the valuation by that time? I think he'd had a draft uh, of it. And what was discussed at that meeting that you had with Mr Dallet um, at that time? Well, we wanted to know the outcome of the valuation. Um, he said that it was done on a privileged basis and therefore he could not provide us with the valuation. But he indicated that it was approximately 100% uh, of the loans value. And what did that mean, that it was a 100% of the loan from what Mr Dallet told you? Well, I presume that he meant like the, the loan balances were around about the 3.6 mark, I think. Uh, I, I presume that that's what he was saying, that the valuation had come in at about 100% of the loans um, as an amount. And and did you discuss further with him the the two matter, the two other matters that you um, had raised and you've given some evidence about, and that is the sale of your uh, the sale of the uh, gaming entitlements or the poking machines and the your your home. Yes, I think we well. I'm sure that we discussed it, and whatever I've said in here, um, it would have been that the, the PMEs I'd arranged for an agent to sell them. Um, uh, we had put the home uh, on the market. Um, and he then said that um, uh, they were not intending to roll over the loans because of insufficient time. Um, that was as a consequence of the fact that the bank had not initiated the valuation until November. They had not instructed the valuer until November, as I understood it. And, um, and now they had a draft and we're in December and the loans were to expire on the 10th of January and there was insufficient time to roll over the loans. Well, make your own judgment. Well, you... So just to put that in context, so you've had this meeting in, in your evidence, I think you say that it was on the 3rd of December. Mm. And when was the facility to expire? 10th of January. Uh, and then after that meeting, um, what, was the next, um, what was the next contact you had with uh, the bank, as best you can recall? Ah, oh, golly. Um, well, I think that... Um, from there on, um, we had email exchanges, right? Um, and the, uh, the 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 bank, I think. Well, what Dellett was saying was that the only way we could go forward was by way of a deed of forbearance, right? Which uh, was to be prepared. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say, but. Uh, you, your evidence says that you received a, a draft of that in in January. Yeah. Um, and you got some advice um, from solicitors in relation um, to that. Um, you wrote, um, you continued to correspond over, um, yeah, over email with Mr Dallet about um, about the deed of forbearance? Yeah, well, uh, as you say, we, we received it on the 8th of January, which was, and the, the facilities were expiring on the 10th, and uh, that worried me because, um, obviously, we, we wouldn't have time to examine the deed of forbearance before the facilities were due to expire, and I thought that left us exposed to the bank uh, calling a breach uh, on the loans themselves. You know, and, um, and we got a response from him to say, you know, like, uh, the deed of forbearance is not due to be signed until, I think, the 22nd of January. I see. And um, uh, under the terms of the deed, we needed to get uh, legal advice, which we then had to appoint a solicitor to um, help us with the deed of forbearance and negotiate whatever terms were going to be in that deed. Mm. And 
until um, sorry then if I can take you then to well the deed of forbearance was entered into um, in January mm -hmm. um, and I didn't ask you previously, but during the course of 2012, were you also, um, we had you made your repayments during 2012? All all repayments and interest were up to date. Yep. And well, we'll, I'll, you, I'll I'll change that. We're we're always made on time. Uh, and the deed of forbearance. Um, required you, amongst other things, to sell three of the poking machines, is that right? Yes. And also to um, uh, provide funds from the sale um, of your home, is that right? Yes. Um, and can you explain what happened first in relation to the sale of the, the poking machines? Well, we did, um, we did uh, achieve a sale with a, a major... Um, organisation and uh, they had a threshold, I think, something like the 29th of January um, in order to, for us to complete the sale. Um, and we, we approached the bank to tell them that we needed to have their approval to release the poker machines from the security um, and that the threshold was the 29th of January and uh, the, therefore it was, you know, pretty urgent to get it done. Uh, so, in the fullness of all of that, um, the bank came back and said, well, they're not prepared to release it unless and until the deed of forbearance is signed. So that sale collapsed. Um, but you were able ultimately to sell them, weren't you? Subsequent to that, yes, we, in fact, the same buyer uh, came back, that was Coles, right? Uh, they had, in fact, uh, another hotel they could use the poke machines in and they had um, deposited the, the sale proceeds with uh, my solicitors, uh, into my solicitors' trust fund. Um, all the paperwork had been done. We'd uh, lodged the papers, the transfer papers with Olga. And who's, who's Olga? Well, uh, Office of Liquor Gaming and... Racing, which was required to transfer the poker machines. Yeah, the authority. Yeah, they have to authorise it, or they have to sign off on it. Yes. And so um, uh, we we were aware that there was a backlog in Olga of approximately two weeks. We we are, we thought and understood. Um, so at that stage, um, I think they uh, what going back in my mind, twenty uh, eighth of Feb was the date called for in the deed of forbearance. Um, a little time before that, we re realised that it was not going to happen and we wrote to the bank um, under the terms of the deed as we could to um, request an extension to the date. And I think I suggested like rather than, uh, an extending at two weeks at a time and monitoring Olga in the meanwhile. Um, so, um, I think uh, Tim Dellett wrote back and uh, wanted to know how long it would be or when it would happen. I said, well, I don't really know because it's in the hands of the authority. Um, but if you extend on a, a couple of weeks at a time, we would uh, you know, be able to monitor that. And um, subsequently, uh, when was that, 28th of Feb? Um, on the 5th of March, uh, we received an email from Tim Dellett saying there was a breach of the terms of the deed of forbearance. Um, I corresponded with him immediately, asked him to withdraw it. Um, our solicitor wrote to the bank solicitor asking them to withdraw it and that we'd requested an extension. Uh, we didn't really get an, uh, an answer from the bank on the extension, the request for the extension at the time. But 5th of March, we were issued with the breach. 8th of March, they received the money from the poker machines, which would have been eight days after our request, after the day that it was meant to be paid. And 
It was around this time, was it, that you um, lodged your complaint with FOSS, with the financial Shortly after service? that, yeah. yeah. And why did you, why did you bring that complaint? Well, at that stage, I reckoned I knew what the bank was on, on about, and um, although I had no knowledge of FOSS at that particular time. Um, and the bank had said that they will refrain from taking any action for 14 days. So uh, I was pretty, pretty concerned at that stage that you know, things were going to be taken out of my hands. And what so what I, do you mean by you're pretty concerned that things might be taken out of your hands? Oh, I thought they would foreclose, you know, and if that's a word you can use, um, that they would... Um, they've, they've called the breaches, they were reserving their rights all the way along. We were getting all... Uh, that sort of um, those sort of terms were being used, and therefore uh, I had no uh, I had uh, every th every thought to believe that they were going to um, appoint receivers. Mm. And and what happened as a result of your um, your complaint to FOSS? Uh, well, we lodged a. Uh, a long letter of complaint um, that went on, that's from March until about November. We had a phone uh, conference between FOSS, the bank and ourselves in November. And, and am I right to say that you ended up resolving the dispute with um, Bank West through the FOSS process at that time? Well, we agreed on a, um, a process only because we were told that if we didn't agree, uh, the bank would be able to determine the course of action. So we had no uh, option but to agree. And, uh, and then uh, that required the sale of the hotel? Yes. And uh, sorry, I should should have said you continued to run the hotel, did you, during the course? Yes, um, I did. Of yeah. 2013. Oh yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and um, and were you able to sell your house during that time? Um, the house was under contract, I think, at that stage, and settlement had not occurred at that time. Uh, if I. Um, Sorry, can you just assist, just in terms of the chronology? The sale of the house was, did settlement occur after you'd commenced the FOS um, proceeding or complaint? Yes. Uh, and why was it that you didn't, um, why was it that you didn't pay any of the um, proceeds of the sale of the house um, to, to Bankwest? I thought that was my most prudent course and I didn't feel any obligation uh, because the bank had, um, well, what's the word I would like to use, unilaterally cancelled the forbearance of the deed. And, sorry, just then to return to where we were in our chronology, that you then, the settlement occurred in December 2013, that required you to sell the hotel by the 28th of February of the following year. Were you able to do that? No. Uh, and? Well, I'll just say this, that the agent that we appointed um, advised us not to commence marketing in December because it was, um, you know, just a, a waste of time. Um, so we started off in January. Right. So it was a big ask and to achieve a contract by the end of February. Uh, and, and ultimately you weren't able to? No. Do so. And, uh, thereafter you, or Mr Dalek contacted you again at that time, did he? Oh yes, I think he issued a breach notice, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and you, made a further complaint to FOS at that time? 
Uh, yes, uh, on different, what we thought would be different grounds. Yep. Uh, that's right. Well, you set out in um, paragraph 88 of your statement the grounds, um, and that, um, well, perhaps I, um, perhaps I can take you to that. That's CBA.4000.0074.3006. So it's CBA.4000.0074.3006. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Thank you, Commissioner. I mean, if I can just go to um, the dispute summary about four lines down where you set out the reasons starting with one. Um, and when you say there were different reasons, is that a reference to what you say are the reasons in this application that the facilities were changed against the will of the borrowers from a 15-year loan to facilities with only a 12-month term? Yes. Yes. Did I hear? Yep. Um, and was that a? And you go on then to explain <laughs> further that they were amended only two years into the facilities. Was that a reference to what occurred? the discussion we had about what happened in 2010? Yes. Uh, and FOSS ultimately determined it didn't have jurisdiction in relation to this complaint, didn't it? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and when you were informed of that on the 22nd of May 2014, what, um, what happened after that? Uh... Well, I th as I understand it, recollect, I should say, um, we had some further communications with Mr. Dellett. Um, we were um, going through the, the sale process and trying to obtain a sale. But you weren't um, able to, though. You weren't able to in the end, were you? No, but uh, we put to them that the, the we needed uh, some further time to explore um, another way of selling or dealing with the business. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that, that didn't uh, hold any water. We then, uh, after the FOSS had uh, knocked us back, that, that must have been in June, I think, or... Um, on the 7th of July, um, the receivers were appointed, yeah, or, or moved in, yeah. And that's when you finished managing the hotel. Mm. Uh, and, um, and thereafter you received a letter of demand in relation to the guarantee, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and ultimately the hotel was sold by the receivers, wasn't it? Correct, yep. Uh, and you're ultimately there was ultimately proceedings against you in the New South Wales Supreme Court. Correct. And you were able to um, resolve those ultimately with Bankwest in about 2016. Is that right? Yep. Um, Mr Weller, you... Um, did you make a public submission to this Royal Commission? Oh, yes, I did. Uh, and, uh, and was it as... A, was it... A, uh, you were contacted then by someone at the Royal Commission to prepare this statement, is that right? Correct. Um, thank you. No further questions. Okay. Yes. yes, Mr Sherry. Um, I have no questions for Mr Weller, the Commissioner. Yes, thank you. Mr Weller, then, thank you for your evidence. You may step down. You're excused further attendance. You want this back, do you? You sure? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr Weller.